That's where the deliverer comes from, out of Zion. Then it's time for the people of God to have some kind of intelligent grasp of the place where God dwells and what it's like and what he's like and what's there and what issues from there. That's why you were raised and made to sit together with Christ in heavenly places. That, Because that's where God is. That's where the blessings are. That's where everything is used forth that's pertinent to life and godliness. The deliverer will come out of Zion. When he turns them, they're going to be found with the Lamb. A revelation presents a picture of this under the, under the uh, likeness of 144,000 people that are found with the Lamb. No, it's not all the Jehovah's Witnesses. They found out that wasn't it. They've, their, their denomination exceeded 144,000, so they, instead of confessing they were wrong, they invented a new theology and said only the first 144,000 are going to be with the Lord, the rest are going to be on the earth. That's what they did. Am I right? That's what they teach. 144,000 are identified in the book of Revelation. You know, the, all the house of Israel, 12,000 from each tribe, which mm -hmm. signified the totality, was the conversion of Israel, what it's talking about. And they were found in the high places, walking with Jesus. What happened? The deliverer came out of Zion and turned away ungodliness from Jacob. You think that it would read, turned away, turned them away from ungodliness. But it says he turned ungodliness from them. <laughs> what does it mean? It means they didn't have an appetite for it anymore. And to this day, Jews are not noted for their immorality. To this day. But they, but they are ungodly because they have not embraced Christ. They're not noted for idolatry either. The Babylonian captivity apparently pretty well ended their propensity to idolatry, but they are ungodly because of their rejection of the Lord Jesus Christ. But he's going to come out of Zion and turn it away from them so it won't have any appeal to them anymore. Once you see Jesus as he is, well, it's a transforming ex experience. And do you know the Word of God tells us that we've come to Mount Zion? This is Hebrews 12, 22. We have come, first he tells you, we've not come to a mountain that can be touched. We've not come to a physical location like Sinai. We have come, we have come to, Mount, we are come to Mount Zion, Hebrews 12, 22. How did we come there? We were raised up and made to sit together mm -hmm. right. with Christ. It, together, the together there is not referring to you and me together, although that is true. It's together with Christ in heavenly places. Zion. See, Zion stands for all this. Jesus himself is positioned in Zion. Now the word of God uh, teaches this. And it relates to him sitting upon David's throne. This is a very... <laughs> controversial subject in in today's church world Romans 9 33 says behold I lay in Zion a stumbling stone and a rock of offense whoever believes on him shall not be ashamed when he laid the stone that was referring to the exaltation of Christ he didn't lay the stone when Jesus first came into the world Administered among, that wasn't the laying of the stone wasn't there. The laying of the foundation stone is when he ascended mm -hmm. back to glory. And he laid the stone in Zion. That's where the foundation, so that's where the building, mm -hmm. <laughs> that's where the building's got to be yes, done. That's right. On high. I lay in Zion. He stated again by Peter in 1 Peter 2.6. Wherefore it is contained in the scripture. That's a, isn't that an interesting way to say it? Contained. It's contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. So at some point, <coughs> a person has to become heaven conscious mm -hmm. and aware of where Jesus is. He is not here. He is risen. As it was the, one of the first messages that was delivered. He is not in the tomb. He is not here. He is risen. Amen. That's where you have to be to see him. As David's throne was in Jerusalem, that's where David's throne was, so Christ's throne is in the heavenly mm -hmm. Jerusalem. 
Now this mentioning of David's throne is found in 2 Samuel 7, 16, and promise, Thy house and thy kingdom shall be established forever before thee. Thy throne shall be established forever. Where was the throne? David's throne. 1 Kings 2, 11 the days of David reigned over the days that David reigned over Israel were forty years. Seven years reigned he in Hebron, and thirty and three years reigned he in Jerusalem. Next, it says of Solomon. Solomon sat on the throne of David his father, which which was in Jerusalem, and he and the can his kingdom was established greatly. So there's, there's a picture here. He's, he's painting a picture. David's throne was in Jerusalem. That's where it was. Now the prophet said this was going to Jesus was going to sit on David's throne in Jerusalem. Isaiah 9 7 of the increase of his government and peace there should be no end upon the throne of David Amen. and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and justice from henceforth forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this at this point. He's, he's, he's talking in the spirit, so to speak. Because the Jerusalem, there is there are two Jerusalems. There's one on earth and there's a Jerusalem above. Jesus was never intended to reign on the Jerusalem of the earth. I know what people teach this, but the Bible never one time, any place, says the Messiah will reign in Jerusalem. But you do your homework and search it out. See if what I'm telling you is not the truth. The prophets never do say Jesus is going to reign in Jerusalem. That's a deduction. That's an interpretation. But they never say that. Yeah. Never do the scriptures say he set up his throne in Jerusalem. Never does it say that Jesus is going to reign on the earth. It says the souls of the martyrs will reign on the earth. That's what it says. What what it means, I'll leave that up to you to decide what it means, but it's got to mean what it says. Amen. Yeah. Here's Jeremiah 3.17. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered unto it to the name of the Lord, to Jerusalem. Neither shall they walk any more in the imagination of their evil heart. Now, see, the prophets are establishing this connection of salvation with Jerusalem. The apostles are going to make the transition and tell you how this, how this is taking place. Luke 1, 32, He shall be great. This is, this is a prophecy of the birth of Jesus. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. All right? That's associated with his birth, not his second coming. Uh -huh. Amen. That, that's what it's associated with. This was, this was the announcement of Christ's birth, not his second coming. He gave him the throne of his father David. Well, it wasn't on earth. David's throne didn't exist at this time on earth right. in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Were they going to build it again? I suppose so. I never heard anyone actually say this, but they'd have to rebuild it. Mm -hmm. That's right. Wouldn't they? If Jesus was intent with Jesus was going to reign on earth, sitting on David's physical throne, mm -hmm. then they're going to have to rebuild it again. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you'd explain that to God, how how Jesus would reign on a throne made for a flesh and blood man. I don't know how you could justify that, but more part of the people to try. I think we should insist they try. If you insist on teaching this, you insist on preaching this, then we're going to put, you're going to put your nose to the grindstone and we're not going to get off this till you prove your point that a glorified Christ can sit on a throne made by men. Or that a glorified Christ can dwell in an unglorified earth. Or that a glorified Christ can cohabit with people that are not transformed. Someone's going to have to prove this point. And it'll be very, very difficult, let me tell you, to do them. But it must be, it must be done. Heavenly Jerusalem answers is, a, is for the fulfillment of the earthly Jerusalem. Now here's Peter on the day of Pentecost. 
speaking about David, therefore he being a prophet, 